are talking about the ideal gas law. And an interesting thing for me is I like this this airplane stuff, right? Like why airplanes fly and but we flying is all you hear it all the time, don't you? Flying is really, really safe. Right? Right? And and I'll show you, I really think it is. The other side of the coin, it's not a coin, the other side, well, something is really, really safe, but let me just give you this statistic. Uh, have you ever bought a lottery ticket? Okay, some, some folks have. So, you know, there's, if you buy a lottery ticket, that means that, you know, there's, there's got to be some chance, minute, fine, but there's some chance that I can win, right? Okay. If you take that same mindset and you sit in an airplane next to where the turbine is, okay, the big spinning turbine, you know what everyone you know, those are the sucky seats because it's loud, right? It's about it's roughly the same probability of that engine failing and the blade flying through the window and right <laughs> as winning a lottery ticket. In other words, it's not gonna happen, I'm sorry. Lottery tickets, it's not going to happen. So it's really, really safe. Now, why is flying so safe? If you have a wing, here's the, the bottom of a wing. Ah, I'm trying to draw a straight line. The bottom of a wing. The top of the wing curved, right? So let's say you're going this direction from San Antonio, I don't know, to, to Austin or something. Right? And here's a little gas molecule that's going to end up going on top of the wing. Here's a little gas molecule that'll end up going below the wing. Right? Yeah. So is the wing, is the airplane flying through the air, or is the air traveling with the wing? It's got to be one or the other. Which one is it? Which one is it? Right? If it's going if the air is traveling with the wing, that means that San Antonio air, literally, has to move with the plane and land there in Austin. This doesn't happen, right? Okay, so the wing is traveling through the air. Everyone believes me so far, right? Okay, so the little gas molecule on, on uh, let's go make them purple, on the bottom, he has to travel from here all the way to there, right? And the red gas molecule, he has to travel from, right, from here all the way to here, right? And do they need to arrive at the other end, at the end of the wing at the same time? Yes, because we just said it's not taking the air with it. The air stays there. Right? Everything, okay? So they both have to, they're, they're both going to end up at the end of the wing at the same time. So that means that little red gas molecule has to travel faster, slower, or the same speed. It has to travel faster because it's farther to go. Make sense? Okay. You can Google this, but it's called the Bernoulli effect. If you have fast moving air over a surface, it actually reduces the pressure. And if it reduces the pressure, you can have lift. It reduces the pressure. Well, what pressure is down here? 14.7 pounds per square inch. <laughs> Atmospheric pressure, right? 14.7 pounds per square inch is down here at the bottom. A lot of pressure. Well, it just gets reduced, so you get lift. So, I mean, it's hard to take that on faith. Just like it's hard to take on faith, never buy a lottery ticket. But I can't prove that one to you. Well, yes, I can. Get about 10, get about 12 die. Roll them. Try to roll all ones. That's your winner. All ones, I don't care. All ones, all sixes, I don't care. Do it. You're going to be sitting there the rest of your life. Anyway. Bernoulli effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to this rubber stopper with a hole. I'm going to blow through it as hard as I can, right? And I'm going to try to blow this piece of paper to hit the table. 
But look what's going to happen to the air as I'm blowing through that. It's going to blow along the surface. Right? Fast moving air along a surface. Bernoulli effect. Supposed to reduce the pressure. What's the pressure down here? 14.7 pounds per square inch. It's a lot. A little fat baby every square inch. That's a lot of weight. So a, there's a lot pushing up on it. There's a lot pushing. It's, it's balanced right now. I'm just going to reduce it a little bit on top. All right. If it didn't work, all the planes in the sky would be falling out of the air right now. <laughs> it has to work. That's why it's so safe. Thank Mr. Well, Bernoulli figured it out, I guess. The, uh, I like this picture. You, you can't see the Joe there very well, but he, he's sweating. And it's hot. And the potato chip manufacturer guy just put too much what in that bag? Yeah, why do they put air in it in the first place? Which doesn't make sense, right? I mean, how much does it cost to make a potato chip? Nothing. So fill the damn bag up. No, they fill it with air. Cereal, the same thing. Cereal's got to be the cheapest thing on the planet. <laughs> and they always do that, right? So these, this company, they just they screwed up. They put in too much air. But the problem is, is it probably wasn't as hard as a rock if the air conditioning in this convenience store is working. But it's not, right? It's hot. When it gets hot, the gas molecules start speeding up, hitting the bag harder, the pressure just goes up. OK. So the ideal gas law, what's the equation? Well, we kind of introduced it once already, PD equals nRT. But we need to know the units. And I told you the trick for the units last time. Because on the quiz, I give you R, 0.0821. So, Melissa, what are the units for P? You have to use that R. Have to be ATM. Jonathan, what do the units of volume have to be? Have to be liters. Little n, Danielle. Little n. Have to be what units? The answer's here. Has to be moles. T, everybody. Kelvin. Kelvin, right? So, and how do you get Kelvin? At 273. No big deal. Okay, now, one thing that's kind of odd is they don't call this the gas equation, because there's a lot of gas equations. They call this the ideal gas equation, because the gas has to be acting ideally, which is kind of a poor choice of words, I think, because it has to act like, well, a dot in space. That is what the ideal gas law says the gas molecules are. They're dots in space. Right? Pretty much just their position, coordinates in space, x, y, z. Does a position in space, Alejandro, have any volume? No. Does it have any mass, do you say? No. It's a point in space. Well, how can it collide? How can it bang against the surface and make pressure? It can't. It's, it's off. This equation is off. PV equals NRT, but it's so convenient and so easy to use. And the answers aren't that bad. I wouldn't fill potato chip bags based on it because if someone, no one buys your bag or that screws it. You don't want that to happen. Or I wouldn't build a, construct a Michelin tire with all the engineering that it's needed and to withstand forces. And I wouldn't depend on the ideal gas law. But if I want to just get rough ideas, it works great because it's so easy to use. They're just points in space. That's, I mean, that's going to give you the wrong answers. Now, there's better equations, and we might hit on those, but uh, just work with this one for now. OK, one more equation, but with molecular weight. So the ideal gas law, the equation is this. I give you all the equations. Another equation, ideal gas law, but it's modified a little bit with molecular weight. So P. Oh, Diana, must be in what units? Oh, let's ask you this first, Dan. Is this the same R? Yes. Same R. So P has to be in what units, everybody? Atmospheres. T. Kelvin. Kelvin. OK, we know what R is. 
How about M? What is M? Molar mass. They call it molecular weight, same thing, molar mass. Molar mass, right, they give you a chemical formula, you add them all up on the periodic table, you get what units? Grams per mole. This has to be grams per mole. And that's what you get anyway when you add them up on the periodic table. So the real question, though, is D. What is D? Anybody know from the reading? It's a density of the gas. And whether it's a gas, I don't know, density, just in general. Density is always what over what? It's always, anybody know? Mass divided by volume. OK. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But it's something you're going to have to know to use this equation. It's just like any other variable. You have to plug in the right units. So given all this stuff, you know what R is. You see all the units for R. You know that big M has to be in grams per mole, right? What units do you think density will be in? God, you got it. It has to be in grams per liter, OK? Now, if you can look at it and see it, great. But if you can't look at it and see, that density has to be in grams per liter, you might want to do a little you do and show that if I rearrange this, I would have little d is what? PM over RT. Plug in all the units for everything. Because you know what the units are for everything. And you're going to get grams per liter. Okay? So density has to be grams per liter. Okay. So any questions on that? No? All righty then. So we can go to the boards and we'll be out of here. And you can have a nice long break. Now, I changed a little bit. I made this look like a quiz. Because this is all the stuff you're given now, right? You got to pick the equation and work with it. So we'll do several of these and then we can call it a day. According to your calculations, a reaction should yield 5.67 grams of oxygen. What do you expect the volume to be at 23 degrees Celsius and 0.985 atmospheres? Okay. So let the equation guide your efforts. So you got to pick the right one. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be up a crick. Which equation do you have to use? Let me ask it a different way. How do you know it's not this one? Yeah, there's no two of anything. Good. So do not use that one. Which one does it have to be? Has to be has to be PV equals NRT. Now you if you used PM equals dirt, the problem is the density. Right? And there's no what in it. You you want to know volume. Heck, there's no V even in it. So I wouldn't use PM equals dirt either. So yeah, I like the PV equals NRT. Use this one. out all those variables. P, V, N, R, T. V is the one we're after.
has to be grams. So it, you're right, but this would be more on top. Oh. 32 grams on the bottom. See, see the grams cancel? Let the units correspond to the variables. Do any converting over here if you need to. Good. You got to get those grams into moles. Exactly. Otherwise, it just isn't going to work. No, V has to be in what units? Look at R. R tells you. R tells you what the volume units have to be in. ATM is good. Right? Because you want pressure in ATM, so don't mess with those units. Because the, the amount of the gas, it's just in the wrong units. You're going to have to convert it. 32 grams of oxygen and one mole of oxygen. And then N will be in the right units. Because N is the amount of gas, it's just in the wrong units. Folks getting about 4.4 or so liters. Make sure you have the right units on that volume. If they would have asked for milliliters, you would have had to do a whole other step, right? Convert those liters into milliliters, if they would have done that. But they didn't. About 4.4? 0 0.0821. That's my R. I give that to you. Oh, that's my moles. I copied Alejandro's answer. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> is that not the wrong? Is that the wrong number of moles? No. Well, Alejandro's right. See, why would you not trust him? Jeez. Five point six seven divided by thirty-two. Okay, it's about four point four liters. We're all good with this one. All right, let's try uh, the next one. Again, I, I copied all of the equations. So if you didn't get the first one, just ask. Pull me over, and I'll help you out. OK, now I just plug it all in. Plug in your P, your V, solve here, right? So you, I would just plug it in. It'd be a lot easier to do the math then. Is this one? He's in the right units too, so leave him alone. Nine eight five, and you can leave the units out because you got them all straightened here. So times v, you're just gonna solve for it. So just put a v equals 0.18. Yeah, times 0.0821. R, which is 0 0.0821, and 
I like to put them in parentheses. It's a lot easier to see it. And then T is uh, 296. Okay. So if you take a look at it, you've got this times V equals all that. So I'd figure out what this number is, divide it by that, and you're done. So this times this, this divided by that? Yeah. Because okay. right, you can recognize, do you see the top and the bottom? This is going to have to go to the bottom. And you're left with V. And R tells you what the units of V have to be. So it has to be in liters. So whatever you get has to be in liters. And if we would have asked for milliliters, you'd have to then convert it to milliliters. But it didn't, so. Yeah, multiply all this together and then divide by this. One thing that kind of makes it easier to see for me is see, you, you listed this all out really nice. So, whoop, you forgot your liters on. This is liter atmosphere over mole Kelvin. And you see this out really nice. So I leave the units out when I get over here. And then it's just easier to see. So it'll be this times this times this. Let's see. I don't know. It should be N times R times T. Uh, v. Yeah, you can see it. Should end up with. Well, what's this 5.67? Divided by 32. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and then I got. Yeah. Okay, so no, no, it has to put it in for n. We use n equals that. So I'll just rewrite it. 0.985 mm, v equals 0 0.18 r 0 0.0821 296. So it's a lot easier to see then. And then okay, so top and bottom. This has to go on the bottom. So all that multiply divide by 0.985, and I'll have V. So butane is easily liquefied gaseous fuel. Find the density of butane gas at 0.897 atmospheres and 23 degrees Celsius. Give the answer in grams per liter. Again, you don't have much choice on the equation. All right. We're just missing. Right, Diana, we're missing M, right? The question had to give it to you. M was what again? Molar mass. And they gave us the chemical formula. Just find the molar mass of it. Four carbons and ten hydrogens, and you'll get, you'll have it. Hmm? Yep, 4.4. That's supposed to be 0.985. Yep, because that's what R tells it. That's what R says it has to be in. You got 58, right, Christian, for your more math? Yep. So you plug it all in. Point one or so? Two point one four. Everyone's comfortable with this one? All right. Last one. Today, okay. So where are you at? Hey, T. Just plug in what T is. Uh, two, two ninety six. 
Yeah, because it's 23 degrees Celsius. So it's just 96. Yeah, yeah, it's between 96. Yeah, and then you're just going to plug it all in up here. You see how I got that? Um, no. Sorry. Because they said that it was C4H10. Okay, so, so you, you just find the molar, molar mass of it. Mass? 4 times 12 plus 10 times 1. Okay. Yeah. Now you got to solve for Anything D. Anything else is given there? Yeah, now, and you have everything now. So now you got to plug it all in up here and solve for D. And how, how did you get R? I give it to you, oh. remember? Okay. That's one of those that are given. Uh, it's a lot easier to see. I, I, so I like doing that. Looking for it, just put D. So this three is about the hard as hard as I can get it. Good. They're looking for molecular weight, so you are using the right equation, PM equals dirt. Just got to look at it. Everything that you need is there. Just got to figure it out. Well, if you're going to do this on your calculator in one step, if you multiply these two first, they have to end up going on the bottom, right? On a calculator, it's a lot easier to divide last, right? So I would multiply these first and divide by these. Or just rewrite it, right? Make your life easier. 0.897 times 58 divide by 0 0.0821, 296, right? And then you just that times that, divide by this, divide by this. Did you find out and three? Did anyone figure out what the trick is to figure this out? The density one, high end, you got to figure out density. There's a way to figure it out. Yes, Jonathan's got it. The trick is to remember what the units are for density. They're grams per liter. So they told you the grams. They told you the liters. Just divide the grams by the liters, and you'll have grams per liter. The what? This? We can copy it all again. Put it all down here. Point oh eight two one. See, it's right here. I give you R. Oh, the final answer of two point one four. <laughs> what did you do now? I don't know. What is it? Okay, 0 0.897 times 58. This is 0 0.08231. R is, right? Mm -hmm. 0 0.0821. R is 0 0.0821. That should be 0 0.08.
Nine seven. Oh. Yeah, it's got to be one point something. What did you get for your pressure? One point oh three. So when you divided your grams, which is 1.28 grams by 0.25 liters, you got about 5.12 grams per liter. Right. Okay, I'll do the next one. Did you get what did you get as a final answer around 160. Well, 160 somewhere around 160 okay so have a good break let me help you with this last one if you if you don't have it done yet